Hi, I'm Robert Boyle, um, CEO of Planet Networks, and uh, we are a local Sussex County business. We're here in uh, Newton, and uh, I want to say everyone, can, uh, we get a, a round of applause here for Jim for putting this thing together. I know there's a lot of work in here. And all of, the, uh, all of the students who helped him as well. And I know this is something that's really important and near and dear to everyone. I mean, you guys are giving up your evening to talk about the internet, so it's obviously important for you. So thank you for coming out. Um, I have a little presentation here. And uh, just kind of switch the HDMI here. There we go. So this is kind of a, it talks a little bit about Planet Networks, but also talks about just the inter state of the internet in Sussex County. So some of you may have moved here from other places, some of you were born here and grew up here, so I just wanted to give everyone a little understanding of kind of how we got to where we are today and why things are the way they are. Um, so that's, that's the where we're gonna go, and hopefully we get there without too much. So you guys probably all remember this, um, 1994, 93, 95 maybe, um, some of you weren't born yet, and some of you remember this. You got a CD in the mail and you said, awesome, I have 500 hours free of this new internet thing, or this AOL thing. And these AOL discs were in every single magazine, every single mailbox, you got like one every other day. And um, so people connected to the internet, and then they thought, wow, that was a lot of fun, that was really cool, I spent hours every day on that. And then they got their phone bill. And I said, oh my god, I have a thousand dollar phone bill. How did that happen? And so, um, you know, before you have internet in your pocket everywhere, kids, and you used to have to dial with a modem on your phone line. And um, so when, that, when this happened, um, there weren't any local numbers in Sussex County at the time. And so everyone was calling Morristown for AOL. And so a few of us um, who were pioneers in this industry, um, Alex is here, who's uh, Mayor Byron, the founder of NetAccess, which a lot of people sure know. And we were uh, we were competitors for many, many years, and um, but we also we we're frenemies. We helped each other too. So um, the uh, we said there's a huge opportunity because everyone really likes this this internet thing, but most people don't even know it's called the internet. They think it's AOL or CompuServe or whatever. And so we set up local numbers throughout Sussex County and started offering local internet access. And Net Access did the same thing. And uh, at the time, you know, I don't know exactly what year, year you guys started offering cable home service, but it was around the same time. 2000, 2000, 2001. 2000, 2001, yeah. So we started, in, basically both of us started in 94, 95, and you guys had... Yeah, yeah 94, 95, yeah, you guys had dial up there, and then they also had cable service, which was faster than ours. We had to use a modem for the return at the time, and so the technology has come a long way. Um, and so this was the beginning, and so there were a lot of um, ISPs in the area. There was uh, Crystal Palace, Garden Networks, which came to Lord, and that's us. Net Access Corp., which was acquired by CoLogic. New Jersey Internet, we purchased. Planet Access Networks, which we purchased. Um, Skylands Networks, they're not an ISP business anymore. To Learning Networks is us. And uh, a few smaller ISPs, I think there's one in Hamburg or something, I can't remember all of them, but there were a couple little ones, different IT companies. So there was a, you had a lot of choices about which ISP you chose when it was dial-up and you were using a phone line. And all our pricing was kind of similar and, and we had similar speeds. So, and then you had the, the phone company and the cable company, and um, so Sprint Embark, CenturyLink um, is the local phone company for most of Sussex County. In Byron, we have Verizon and um, Vernon has Warwick Valley, but for the most part, CenturyLink is the local phone company. And they all, of course, provide phone lines that we all use for dial-up, um, and then they, had, they offer dial-up service competing with, you know, Pentel Data and us and NetAccess. Uh, for dialogue, and then they also started offering DSL at one point, and they have always had business fiber for a long time, and now they're offering fiber in a couple of different little communities. I think they have like two or three communities they're offering in Sussex County now. Um, Service Electric, Pentel Data, One Way Cable at first. Um, now you guys are done. It's three or three one. Three one. Okay, so three one. So it supports up to a gigabit if they if you guys provision it that fast. Um, and there's a lot of upgrades needed. It's not just like they turn on the switch and why are these guys not turning on the switch? There's a lot of upgrades they have to do the network to provision that. But um, 
they're working on that. And then you offer 150, I heard you're offering 300 now in some places? 150, okay, okay. 150 um, down now and 15 up, okay. I wasn't sure if you were going to be here, so I prepared this so people know it's up here. Um, and Optimo Altis is another keyboard company, and they're in the northwestern areas like Montague and um, basically border New York and PA. And I think they're up in Vernon too, right? Oh, they're not in Vernon, just Montague? Okay. These guys know the cable industry more than I do, so. Um, so, Tellurian Networks is what our old name was, um, and we were doing dial-up in 1994. 96, we did, uh, we upgraded to 56K, which is double the speed. So I'm just bringing this up to kind of tell, and this isn't just us, NetAccess did the same thing. And we're talking about the speeds of our connections and, and how fast things were evolving back then. So 1994 to 96, we doubled the speed in two years. And then we had ISDN at the same time, so that's four times the speed of the original dial-up. 1997, three years later, we're offering DSL at three megabits a second. That's 50 times the speed of dial-up. So in those three years, we increased the speed by 50, 50 times. 1998, we started offering high-speed wireless, which was 100 times the speed of dial-up. So four years later, we were 100 times faster than when we started. Um, and then we started doing some limited fiber internet service, um, building to building back in, you know, 99. So we we're offering 10 megabit and 100 megabit service 20 years ago. So how many of you have 100 megabit at home now? Raise your hand. Okay, a couple people. Okay, so that was 20 years ago. So, <laughs> so we had 100 megabit in 1999. What happened? Um, for us, CenturyLink raised their wholesale prices for copper by four times, and they undercut our retail pricing by 40%, effectively ending us offering DSL. Uh, late 1990, Service Electric Cable began offering two-way cable service. That was, you said it was around 2000 something. Okay. Um, in 2000, the wireless equipment and use of the time was not truly reliable. So we were doing some wireless deployments, but we actually wound up decommissioning all because it just wasn't there yet. Technology wasn't mature. Uh, and then we stopped, in 2000, we stopped deploying our own DSL equipment, and we focused our efforts on our business, cloud, and hosting services. And um, in 2000, there were a lot of, um, we created a C-like subsidiary, which is a competitive local exchange carrier, basically a, a phone company that's not the incumbent phone company in Central. And we have the right to be on polls and everything, but the courts, there were so many court battles going back and forth between people who had hundreds of millions of dollars to spend in court battles um, that we, the rules were constantly changing. So we just decided to focus on our hosting business, and that's what we did. So we kind of got out of the internet access business. So, so why doesn't Sussex County have more options? Um, low population density and a large geographic area. Uh, you can, if you're in Newton or Sparta, you, know, you have pretty high density, and at least around Lake Mohawk, but you know, in Sparta is what, I don't, I don't remember how many square miles, but you know, it's, it's pretty big. Yeah, and 35 then, square miles. Yeah, Byron's big, and you, you up in like Sanderson, I think a lot of these places in Sussex County where you may drive a mile or two before you hit the next house. So it's just not cost effective to deploy in a lot of these areas where the return on investment is measured in decades. So, um, higher cost to deploy due to distances and terrain. So, if you're in the southwest of the United States, you can set up an antenna and do wireless in Texas, and you can reach someone 20 miles away. Here, you can maybe reach maybe in your neighbor's house with our community trees of light. So, um, the secondary market for CenturyLink, um, Ohio, Florida, and Kansas are their larger markets. So, they don't you know, this is one of their acquisitions with United Telephone, so it's not really a focus for them. So they don't spend a lot of um, a lot of money deploying services here. So I can't speak for them, but just being a customer for many years and working with them—that's my observation. So, and sometimes difficult and expensive pull attachment process, um, and that's that's from our standpoint. Um, service Electric has uh, franchise agreements with each town, so they can go on any polls. But no, you know, with. No, we, we have the same. Oh, you, you have the same poll attachment process? We don't have any polls. We, we, we use our polls from either JCPNL or Central. So you still have to the same nightmare we do for poll attachment? We don't have our polls. That's the, that's the majority of most cable companies. But don't you get the automatic attachment? No. You don't? Oh, I thought your franchise agreement gave you attachment rights. Not as well. We have to apply for 
The same as we do. You gotta say what's everywhere on the pole and Wow. I'm sorry, I thought you guys had a special commandment. Why your points about how it's Oh, my yeah. That's correct. It's okay. Okay. So, well, that's interesting. I learned something new. We're all going to learn something new tonight. That's why we're here, right? So, how is today different than 1999 when we decided we did not want to be in the consumer internet access business because just it was not a good place to be? Um, so, Congress passed the Telecommunications Act, uh, creating CPEX, which are competitive local exchange carriers, and. We're licensed by the New Jersey, New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, and we have certain rights that are granted to us by the BPU and by the FCC. One of those is that we can attach the poles, and we can interconnect with other carriers for exchanging telephone traffic. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things that happened with that is all of the incumbent phone companies, the regional bell operating companies, the big ones, I'm not talking about Century, I'm talking about Verizon, Bell South, Verizon was Bell Atlantic at the time, um, Bell South, um, US West, all of the companies that used to be AT&T before they were, it was, you know, after it was broken up, all of those guys had a huge vested interest in making sure they didn't have competition. So they spent huge amounts of money, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, suing all these CLECs into oblivion or getting favorable court decisions that basically disadvantaged the CLECs. So the Telecommunications Act didn't really do what it was supposed to do because they used the courts and their money and their power to make sure that they weren't uh, competing on a level playing field. So in that time, 96 through 2006-ish, it was, it was really hard to be a, a uh, CLEC because you're constantly changing, the rules were constantly changing. And then you're playing, you're playing a game with somebody and halfway through it, all the rules change and everything you thought you were doing right is now wrong and everything you thought was not going to cost you money is now costing you money. So. Anyway, in 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act was passed, and there was a section on that encouraging broadband internet deployment and competition. So for the first 10, 15 years of the internet's existence, the federal government kind of you know, was hands-off and didn't really regulate it, and it was just an information service that rode on top of the telephone networks. And they were seeing really large disparities between what was happening in rural areas and what was happening in more urban areas where there was competition. And so some of the laws that were passed basically said that you have to have competition, you have to allow it, and all those things that were decided by the courts, that the courts said, oh, well, that's okay, they don't really need to be allowed to attach, you know, they don't really need to be, they're not really allowed access to conduit, they're not really allowed to do all these things that we need to do as, competi as competitors to the phone company to be able to compete. Um, the Congress and the FCC said, these are the rules, those court cases are not valid. This is what we meant when we passed that law, and we really meant it, and this is what you're going to do. So that changed the regulatory environment, made it more favorable for us to, um, to reconsider providing internet access. So, so who is Planet Networks? So 1994 and 1998, uh, we were Garden Networks. Anyone in here have Garden Networks? Okay, cool. And then we had a couple clients in New York who canceled our services in New Jersey, business clients. And we said, why are you doing that? And they said, oh, because your garden networks, you only provide service in New Jersey. And they said, we've been in New York for many years. And they said, oh, we thought you were just in New Jersey. So we, after a couple clients did that, we said, okay, maybe it's time to change the name. So, so we changed the Tolarian Networks, which is the world instead of just New Jersey. Um, and so from 1998 to 2008, we were Tolarian Networks, and we focused on our data center business and our hosting services. What everyone knows is cloud now. We were doing that for a very long time. And um, so that's what our focus was and during the time period. Our cloud business, we became the largest electronic medical records hosting company in the United States. And um, we sold that division of the company to Dell. So, And they wanted the name to learn because so it was well known in the medical industry. So we changed our name and we became Planet Networks. And um, that's who we are now. And um, that's all of records, and that's, that's our headquarters. And um, we bought the building in 2000, I remember now, it's a long time ago. 2005, I think, from the county, and we completely uh, restored it. And um, 
then that became part of, um, if you've seen the sign up front, it became Dell, then it became MTT Data, and uh, they left the building last year and we're back in it now. So here's uh, my first employee back in 1994, and that's me when I was, uh, there was less of me and more hair. <laughs> And this is our first servers back in 1994-95, uh, I think, or 486s. And so all the services that we offer, we offer a lot of services now because we've kept that, that business focus on um, cloud services and infrastructure. We do wiring and cabling. We do managed services. We're not just an internet company, but everyone's here tonight about this one. That's the only one you guys care about. So, so here's, uh, here's some of our deployments. We're uh, deploying fiber all over Sussex County today. And um, we have, uh, we offer a lot of different services, and uh, here's some uh, equipment in our trucks and guys splicing in the van. We also offer high-speed wireless services in certain areas with little micro-pops. And um, so we have um, a lot, and we deploy a lot of different ways. We deploy in telephone poles, we deploy building to building, we deploy through trenching. Um, now the future holds, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the future. Um, and then some of that future is closer than you think. Um, fiber to the home is big. Um, 10 gig and 40 gig GPON we're working with and experimenting with in our labs now. So we're deploying gigabit services now, which is 1,000 up and 1,000 down. Um, and we're also um, experimenting with uh, 10 gig and 40 gig um, services to the home uh, and to the business. Because you don't need it today, but you know, another five or 10 years and you will. So. Uh, and all of the infrastructure we're putting in today is capable of those speeds. So 5G is um, something that a lot of people hear about. The reality is that 5G, if we, if we all had 5G phones and there was a 5G tower um, on Ryerson Avenue, your phone wouldn't work in here, you couldn't get 5G. The, uh, the, the distances are incredibly short, we're talking about hundreds of feet. Um, and also, it doesn't penetrate anything more, like doors block it. So, if you're inside the building, 5G is not going to work very well. Um, so I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, I live in rural Sussex County. As soon as 5G is deployed, I'm going to have great internet. That's not going to help anyone in Sussex County, unfortunately, except for maybe if you live in, in a downtown area where they want to experiment and put up a cell tower. So um, those are micro pumps. I'm talking about every block basically has to have one. So in Manhattan, you'll see one on pretty much every block um, when they start deploying 5G. Uh, SpaceX Internet Satellites. So, up here in the upper right, this is a, uh, you guys, everyone know who SpaceX is? Does anyone know who Elon Musk is? Tesla? Okay. So, he has a, uh, you know, people have very strong feelings about him one way or another, but uh, he's, he's definitely a visionary guy who, who likes to, uh, you know, pursue his dreams, which is really pretty cool. So, he's deploying constellations of satellites in low Earth orbit to provide high-speed internet access. And um, jury's still out on whether those are going to work well or what kind of coverage you're going to get. Um, one of the issues with any type of satellite, if anyone has direct TV or dish, what happens in the storm? Your internet, or your, your cable, you know, your cable, but your, uh, your television service goes out uh, because cloud cover blocks the signal. So it'll be interesting to see how, how these do. Um, it's not really going to be for mobile. The antenna, I think, is about two feet, but the two feet. Um, by two feet, so it's going to be something that you can sleep on the outside of your house and get service. So it'll be good for really, really rural areas. Um, 5G, this is a 5G um, antenna over here, and there's a lot of equipment, and that 5G um, cell site has to have um, several racks of equipment within um, 10 kilometers of where it's deployed. So there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be deployed, and there's a lot of cost to that, and there's a and the return on investment just isn't going to be there for the, for the rural area of Sussex County. And uh, more bandwidth is always needed. And uh, a lot of you guys use streaming services, um, and all these streaming services, if you have, the average home now has about 10 to 15 devices in it. So your kids have a tablet, you have a TV, you've got a Roku, you've got your Apple TV, your Fire Stick, whatever, and um, you have your phones, and people are always streaming videos, looking at YouTube, watching television, whatever they're doing. And all that stuff uses bandwidth all the time. And so the need for bandwidth is going to only go up with VR and with um, new applications that we haven't even developed yet. So, you know, let's imagine 10 years, 15 years from now, a lot of the 3D printing technology really matures, 
and you have like a replicator type thing. If you're going to replicate something, you need a lot of bandwidth to be able to pull down all that data for what it is that you're building. So, and there's a lot of other potential things in the future. So, that's it. So, thank you. Oh, one, one more thing I want to do. So, one more quick little thing here. So, it's a speed test. So, we provide the internet access for Newton High School. So, here's a little speed test. Oh, I'm not. That's weird. Now, hang on a second. Let me. Oh, you know what? Hang on. It's because I have the PowerPoint up. This PowerPoint steals control of the second screen. Let's just fix it in a second. So this is a this is a speed test. I'm checking the speed here, and because this is my laptop, it's not super high speed. If I make it smaller, it actually runs faster. So download speed here is at 8,670. On our upload speed right now, this is uh, 1,700. So. It's probably a little bit faster than we have at home, but um, that's what we're uh, that's what we're deploying now for our business clients, and um, that's what we can you know that's what we're working on for uh, residences for within the next couple of years. Do we have any IT staff here in the uh, gathering? Raise your hands if you're so. Just uh, does this number get you excited? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good number, in other words. I'm sure there's people in the audience who might not know. So, all right, very good, thank you. How thank much you for that number? <laughs> yeah. That's that's megabits. So, that's uh, 8,670 megabits. So, I don't know what you have at home. Probably 40, 50, maybe 100. Three, six, 27. Okay, that's a little bit faster. That's eight gigs. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's one of our, you know, it's all of our goals is to bring that kind of internet service to Sussex and Warren counties. And, and the good thing is that, um, and I don't know if we can, how much credit we can take for it, but um, I, I know CenturyLink wasn't really giving these guys competitions, so we're giving them competition. They have much bigger reach than we will, and we're never going to hit all the areas that they do from a, side, from a service coverage area, but um, definitely competition is good for both of us, so. Yeah, like Robert says, like, competition is good. Um, and as he says, we, offer, we do offer service across the entire county for the most part. There's a few pockets here and there that don't, we don't provide service, but we offer you know, anywhere from 25 to 150 meg everywhere throughout our entire footprint. Whether you're you know, downtown Newton or you're by the New York State border in Wanage, we offer the same services wherever you are. So there's two different kinds of offering service, or two different, two different ways of offering service, but you know, we try to, we don't try to like, pick out certain areas and only offer our faster services there. We want to offer the same services to every citizen in the county. So every resident in the county gets the same kind of speeds. So it's just two different kinds of business plans, but they have the same goal offering the best service and the best, I mean, the best quality service to everybody. Since we do the homework and we share out the assignments to all these Google Maps that we like to do, we just assume that the kids can get it. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you that as I pull my robotics team members, which is where this all started, um, they will confirm that, you know, they, they just can't. They don't all get it. They're, they're, it's not a level playing field. So um, I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't stop here tonight. Uh, <clears throat> so two weeks ago, I had reached out to Congresswoman Cheryl to make her aware of this opportunity. And again, all the legislators are down in Washington, D.C. this week. So my bad. Unfortunately, I picked a bad time for it. Uh, but in, in any event, I was at Pickerton Arsenal for the last two weeks uh, teaching their, their children, people that work at the base. So that's, you know, Army personnel and any of the civilian engineers that work there. And uh, I was very fortunate to have an opportunity to talk with uh, the 
garrison commander who had two of his children enrolled in our, in our group. And so I asked him one afternoon, I said, you know, how's the, how's the base? And I told him that I was having this form. And, you know, I think anybody would agree, no matter where you are, if somebody asks you that question, I'm sure any of the superintendents here, you know, it's good, but it could always be better, right? There's always room for improvement. So I feel like that's what we're all here for, hopefully to come together to continue to inform and work with our legislators to make sure that they're aware of all the things they need to be aware of on these topics. And having you gentlemen up here that, you know, run this industry for more locale, and, and hopefully in the future I can reel in uh, CenturyLink to get them here to the table too, to understand and hear a lot of the concerns that maybe some of the residents are going to raise in a few minutes. Um, you know, it, it can always be better. And, you know, Picatinny Arsenal, in my mind, they, they provide our security to our country, you know, with or what they deal with. So uh, I happen to be in Ornament University, and as educators there for the two weeks, uh, we had no internet. And we just, we just suffered greatly while we were there. And that may or may not have been on purpose because of the military nature. So I'll, I'll just say that. I don't, I don't know for a fact. So, um, Anyway, I just want to All right, so here are the ground rules. Uh, we, have a, we have a clipboard out there where you can sign your name, cell, email, business, town, for any email communication distribution that's follow. Uh, forum guests who wish to come to the microphone, podium to speak, or ask a question, uh, could sign up on that clipboard, offer constructive suggestions, ideas, thoughts, resources, remarks to our gathering. And I guess uh, I'll stay with my three minutes, uh, limit of three minutes. Please limit your remarks to positive, constructive ideas. And um, I think that's it. So if any, anybody would care to line up, I would perhaps start a line right here in this uh, aisle and we'll just bring you up uh, one by one if you have things that you want to either ask or question or remark about. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this week. <coughs> Hi. Hi, my name is uh, Ed Glick. I live in Stillwater, and I represent all my neighbors around Fairview Lake. I must have missed something. I'm here to find out what is going to be done. We have, is anyone from CenturyLink here? No, I oh. Yeah. Well, we're, we have what we call Rinky Dink CenturyLink, and all we see is uh, spinning a lot. I mean, it's really pretty bad up there. I, I live in a, uh, I mean, we, this was deemed as a rural community gathering. We're probably more rural than most of you folks, I guess. And uh, it's really lousy service, and uh, um, we're kind of sick of it. And we don't know what to do. Uh, we've contacted, is, is Congressman Gottheimer here? I guess not. He's been instrumental in helping Warren County. My town didn't even ask for his help. That's going to change because I went down in Ottawa. Not that that matters much. But I'm here to find out what really concretely you're going to do. I think our problem may be we have uh, lines that are at least 40 years old when we had party lines there. I don't know if that's what the problem is. But if CenturyLink could juice up their power, uh, to not, you know, a little bit anyway, it would be very, very helpful. Now, I don't know if CenturyLink is in this game forever. There's rumors abounding that they're for sale. I can certainly tell you they don't seem to care a lot. So that's really all I want to say. I know we're all here not because we have wonderful internet service. We must all have it lousy one way or another. But let's really see if we can get something done here. Thank you very much for the time. Yeah, so uh, Robert Boyle from Planet. Um, so, He's uh, talking about CenturyLink. So one thing is you do have, um, you might have options. I don't know if you've tried, uh, we don't currently offer service in Fairview Lake. It is on our roadmap. We have no competition. There's no interest. You sure you can't get cable? No, we don't. Yeah, but, but that's not CenturyLink. So you do have a choice, I believe. No, no other companies. Yeah. Who, who services that besides CenturyLink, sir? So Service Electric might have service in that area, um, if we can get like a list of addresses. Um, YMCA can't, we're around that lake, so we have the same problem. Okay, so off of like Fairview Lake Road, like up off the left there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty rural up there. I don't know if you guys... 
Yeah, I'm not, not totally sure. So there may be service on the street, but you may need to run uh, coax from like, down the driveway of, of the camp in order to get their service. I don't know. Now, is, it, is it like a whole bunch of? Sorry, is it, a, is it like a group of homes? Like how many homes are we talking about? How many homes are we talking about here? Like is it nine? Nine. Nine to do much. The other side. Okay, on neither side, you're saying neither side has access to our service there? You're, you're saying that neither side has access to service electric cable service there? Is that what you're saying? Or they, is only, the central link is the only option there? Yeah, I mean, okay. service electric, but they'll probably all switch. Is anyone here from service electric? He's got it. We're here. <laughs> What's your name? I'll My name is James Gallifrey. I'm the IT director for the company. So a lot of the time, it's just, it's known where there's demand. So I, I'm sure Service Electric does the same thing. We have a survey on our website that we want people to fill out when they fill it out. We, we've built out in areas where people have said, hey, we want service here. That's where we go. You know, if, if you're somewhere and nobody's ever said anything to us, we don't know it exists. I mean, I grew up in Sussex County. I was born in Green. I lived in Lafayette and Newton. And um, you know, now I live in Denville. My wife's a school teacher there. But, um, so, I'm very familiar with Sussex County. I've been on probably every road in Sussex County at one point in my life, but I don't know where people want service unless they go to our website and sign up and ask. And the same thing with, with Service Electric. Yeah. If, you, if they don't know you, you don't have service, then you, know, you definitely reach out to them and ask them. And that, that, I'd say I do agree with that too. The fact that if we don't know that you want service, we have to, if you can contact our office uh, or send an email to us, we can look and see if we do have service already in your area. Or you know, we can figure out if there's a way to build to certain areas. Yep. We all want more customers. So if you tell us that you are willing to give us money and tell us where you live, we'll <laughs> try to build to you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Abraham Brusher. I'm an RF engineer by education. Where since 1977 I do the software. Uh, my office is in uh, Lake Patcon, and that's Morris County, and we have, I believe, Verizon with 100 megabit download and I think 30 megabit upload. However, in Sparta, which I moved into in 1996, uh, started out with CenturyLink. The reason you don't get speed on CenturyLink is they use copper wires, phone lines, and the word bandwidth was mentioned earlier. The bandwidth on the telephone line is not very great. So that's why the speed is slow if you use copper, such as century. If they put in fiber, it would be super fast. Uh, service electric, most of the connections that we do with coax. We use a HFC, so we're fiber to the neighborhood pretty much, and then we go coax, and that's the, the well, customer job. Coax gives you a much bigger bandwidth. That's right. Yep. A lot faster. Uh, I have at home 30 megabit download. My complaint or my request would be, can you do something up a little bit? Here, here. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I do software for development at home, and I'm not a guru on operating systems, so I have a gentleman who used to be my employee, and I consult and moved to Tennessee, works for a high food and credit card gas company, and run your credit card when you uh, stop at the pump. Every time you connect, you go, this thing is so slow because he needs to get the video out of this, my screen into his uh, Tennessee. So he's constantly complaining. My wife says at the computer constantly complaining when she's connected to the office. So now, it would be nice to get a little bit more speed going the other direction. Or can you tell us why the speed is not as fast? I honestly can't tell you that because we do offer speeds that are faster than 30 meg. We actually don't offer a 30 meg package. We are 25, 40, 55, 100, and 150 meg. And yeah, so we do offer more yeah, different packages. Um, if you can just go on our website, the, the price is right there on the website. And yeah, we do offer different packages to accommodate different users, like different like power users and things like that. So. But not the upload. Upload is 15 tops. Yeah, 150, 150 meg down by 15 meg up. That's the, that is the nature of, that's the nature of an HFC plant. An HFC plant is an asymmetric plant. So you have so much bandwidth in the forward direction towards you that you're downloading, and you have a smaller amount of bandwidth available to the cable company and then to the customer in the return. It's the way that the HFC plant works. 
Um, not necessarily a deficiency in the plant or the way you know the way we provision. It's just the way that HFC innately works. So I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, a good friend of mine invented the cable modem, and so I've had many discussions with him about it. So um, one of the issues is basically you have different channels, and we'll think of it as channels for for the cable. Um, on the cable, you have a certain amount of spectrum, and they have to chop that spectrum up because it either goes in one direction. You're sharing the, the you have a single wire, and you're sharing that single wire for your transmission and your receiving, and so they chop it up into different frequencies. And they say these are the frequencies we're using for the channel back, and these are the frequencies we're using for the channel down. And so, because most internet traffic is asymmetrical, you're downloading things, you're watching videos, you're pulling files down. It makes sense for them, from a business perspective, to provision more channels in the downstream direction. Right. Most people download; they don't upload. Well, the, the, the thing is, too, in our and our cable system too, we're not only offering internet service; we're also offering like 400 TV channels as well, and phone service. So we don't have a pipe that's just dedicated only to internet, it's for other services as well. So that's the way we provision it, it's just the way that we have to do it, do the way that we have, the way that the plan is basically built. So yeah, we don't have a dedicated plan just for broadband at that point. But we build out our network so you're able to get the speeds you're provisioned for, you know, at, at, even at peak times. So it's, you know, we, we try to do our best and we do our best to make sure that everything runs smoothly and, it's a balancing act when it comes down to it. I apologize, I'm going to be leaving. I just flew in from Seattle. I'm leaving my wife for dinner. So as, long, as much as I like to stay longer, I need to leave shortly. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alan Abramson. I'm a resident here in Newton in a new area. Um, I have a bad habit of saying things the way it is. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm just going to put it out there. I think that there's a good amount of people here tonight who are interested in two things. Number one, being service, and number two, being cost of whom my heart goes out to, especially with families that have two, three children. When you add up what's needed to provide to them. I've heard from one presenter tonight of what they are currently in the process of doing. I've heard from the initial presentation of legislation that's needed to make things happen in Newton and throughout Sussex County. I want to remind everybody, this is 2019. This isn't something new. This isn't something that's just come up. It's been around for a while. And I don't think we want to hear about what's happening in the years to come. I don't think we want to hear what kind of service we now have and we'll continue to provide that kind of service. I think we want to know when, what, and how is each resident and business owner going to be affected by the changes and when are they going to occur? So, I hope I didn't speak that a lot. I'm not putting anybody in a position I don't need for them to be. But, when I hear a person saying legislation will be passed, we all know about legislation. When I hear other things, we all know about time permits, politics, rules, regulations, regulations changing, and everything else. There's some people looking around the room, probably my age and older, and we don't have time. We want to, we want to <laughs> see it now. There's a lot of movies on Netflix, and I want to watch them now. <laughs> now. Um, 
uh, for people with young children right now. So I hope I didn't say anything that wasn't true, but as a single person living alone in Newton, and I'm new to Newton, and the information I've been hearing, and gathering, and seeing, I felt this needed to be put out there. Thank you. So, just to address that, so um, anyone you see with a planet shirt, grab them. We have service all over Newton today, fiber service. We have 300 by 300 for 7495 a month. So, if you are in Newton, if, we're, if we don't reach you yet, we probably will by next summer. We're deploying over the next you know, 12 months. I'm referring specifically to the new townhomes, the condos that are behind the quick check. Mm -hmm. We've approached the owner several times and um, we have not heard back from him. Because you're we're very interested in building. You're not the only one. What's that? You're not the only one. Yeah, so. We don't hear back. It's a problem with that. Yeah, so if, if you can get the developer to contact us, we would love to deploy that neighborhood. So. And yeah. we're ready to do it immediately. So. Have you, have you contacted Service Electric about the, about the issue too? Because yeah. I believe we have service back in that area. Yes, we so, we do. Yeah, so I mean, have you called our office to see if you can get service there? Or, I'm, I'm aware of the service. Yeah. Um, I think, personally speaking, for myself, without having any premium stations whatsoever, and not having the highest tier that you offer, um, I was paying an outlandish amount of money for having the service that I had. Um, that's why I said in my little presentation that people with children, I could see where it could be a hardship for them. But cost, also service. I personally have some difficulties with service, and there's no option for me. Either take it or leave it. Just so everyone knows, that, that neighborhood, CenturyLink opted not built, so the only option he has is service electric. And not, I, mean, I think your service is fine. We use your service for a lot of work, sorry, the customers. And, and so. plenty, I mean, you guys can actually offer wireless there too, right? At some point, or does it make sense? We, we could. Uh, we had the antenna on top of Marion Gateway, but uh, there's a cell tower there now, so. That presents a problem. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Joe DeLuca. I work here for the New Board of Education. I'm one of the network administrators. Um, me and my colleague, uh, Pat Deerling over here, we oversee the IT services for the entire district. Um, we, you know, everything from helping a teacher out to infrastructure, um, to security cameras, Wi-Fi, and you know, everything that the, the school needs and the students need. So, um, speaking from the school side and uh, the students' perspective, the students, we, we live here in the school um, in a cloud environment. Um, our students, we give them all access to unlimited storage through Google Drive. Uh, the problem is we are able to provide them with um, the service that they need here to use these services, but at home, um, you know, as we've been speaking about all night, uh, they lack, you know, the ability to to get the speeds that they need to take advantage of the cloud services that we're able to offer them here. Um, we recently um, lost our contract with Affinity and um, are now with Planet Networks. Um, they were able to come in and, and take over our service without a, a skip or beat. So thank you so well for that. Um, I also am a resident of Sussex County. I live in Vernon. Um, I've lived in Vernon for about seven years now. Uh, I don't live in Newton, but you know, I'm, I see you know, what our students go through here. Um, uh, in Vernon, I started off with Service Electric because CenturyLink isn't even really an option for me. Um, at home, I, I have everything in the internet. Internet te television, streaming, internet, um, you know, through Netflix. Uh, pretty much everything that we do in my household is through the internet. I don't have cable. Um, I don't have DirecTV. DirecTV, you know, costs were just astronomical, so I opted for, you know, internet-provided services. So, um, Service Electric, we started out with, I think it was um, maybe a 15 meg package when, um, I moved into my house around 2012. That is just over time. 
Uh, that's been upped over time. We're, we're up to about 50 megabytes. Uh, with that up in speed, we've also gone up in cost. I pay around $72 a month for internet, which you know I, I pay happily because you guys are what, the best service available for me. Uh, I would love to see some more competition in our area uh, from from every company, you know, not just you know from you guys or CenturyLink. Uh, so um, so that's really it, Vernon. I mean, you know, I just. The cost and the speed have gone up. Um, the speed is sufficient enough for me to, to do everything that I need at home. Um, but we run into issues where a lot of people that I know and I meet um, live, you know, down a road maybe, you know, half a mile from from a pole where your service ends, and then they can't get service because, you know, to run a line down to their house, you know, there's a big ticket bill. So what kind of frustrates me, you know, hearing from other people is. Uh, and residents that, that are in that situation, um, they're ending up having to foot the bill to get the cable run to their homes. Um, to my you know, personal perspective, I feel that that bill shouldn't be put onto the client, it should be put onto the service. Um, can you guys speak, speak to something like that? Yeah, so what you're actually talking about where you have an instance where a, a potential customer is just beyond the edge of our, our cable plan, it's called a non-standard install. So that means that they are beyond the, the, the means of like where, where we're operating. So to be able to build to that home, if it's a half mile away and there's no plan, we have to actually build a half mile of plan and go through the, the process like Robert spoke about, going through uh, applying for permits and things like that, uh, other such. And it, it can cost, I don't know, 25, 30 grand a, you know, a mile to actually run the plan. Um, and when you talk about reaching, uh, reaching one customer, it's a tough economic decision to make. So that's kind of why you might see that kind of problem. And it is difficult for us because we want to, we want to gain customers, but it also has to make economic sense. Um, it's, it, I don't like that fact because I want every guy on it. I believe everybody should have access to the internet, but unfortunately, that's kind of what it is. But what I, what I would say to your, your friend is you know if they can contact our office and we can actually like look at what where they are maybe we can do find closer or we can get them service a different way. So there might be a different way to look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think these people end up with like you know I'm sure you're working with them too. But there is always a cost that's usually you know too high for them to foot. So they usually end up just sticking with their current service or um, you know like a lot of them are serviced by CenturyLink uh, and then uh, I know a lot of people are end up just going with uh, Verizon hotspots because they're even able to provide the 4G service and speeds faster than century link. Um, yeah, that's, that's really, I understand the challenges that everyone faces. Yeah, it's an, it is a, sometimes it is an economic challenge because yeah. we do want to offer service to everybody. So. And just me personally, I'd like to see my building. Yeah. Um, one more thing for you though. Um, you said about, about the students not being able to access whatever what they need efficiently. What, what speeds do they need? So, okay, so we offer, you know, our speeds from 25 to 150 meg. What speeds do they need to adequately access their, their you know, their, their work? So I, I'm on, I'm sure. here as well. I'm you yeah. know, working on my, my, you know, on the master degree, but I can work on it no problem, but I'm just trying to understand because my needs are going to be different than your students' needs that are much younger than me and much, have much different needs than I do, but we need to understand that as well. Um, in my opinion, uh, 50 megabytes down is, is a minimum a household should have with you know all the technology that Mr. Boyle spoke about earlier, cell phones in the house, fire sticks, smart TVs. Um, I think that's that's been sufficient for me in my home, uh, but I don't I don't know personally what some of the students who have said they've had issues actually have. Right. Um, so do they have CenturyLink or do they have that's, that's like like access to the planet like Robert would provide or do they have access to us? Because that would be a really good thing for us to understand as a, as a provider is understanding the actual needs. What bandwidth do they actually, yeah. what, what application is actually driving it and how much is needed? So we can better understand yeah. the market. I mean, 15 megabytes down in my opinion should be a household standard. 100 megabytes, I would, you know, should be really where we should be at, I feel like, in, in 2019, 2020. Um, the issue here is, is, especially in like a technology class like Mr. Hawkins class, they're dealing with large files. So when they go to spin up their Google Drive at home and all of their storage is in the cloud, we don't have anything local 
um, you know, they go to access it in the time that they have to, to you know, come home, extracurricular activities, do their homework, and now they want to actually work on one of these large files. By the time they get it downloaded, it's time for bed. Yeah, I understand. Um, unfortunately, one of the, the, the games that we play out here, too, is the marketing game that we see with, you know, with the, the ours and other larger companies out there that say everybody needs a gig and, and everything like that. And I think everybody does need a gig, but we're still waiting for the driver to actually get us to that point where, you know, the applications that are out there actually drive us to the point. So. Yes. While we're on your side as a community, if you ever need any you know, assistance yep. from the community, hey, yep. can, I, can I just make, can I make one good. comment? So I, I'm, as I said, I'm the mayor of Byron Township, and I've been in touch with the Board of Education of Byron on this topic a lot about why kids don't have accessibility to their Google Drive or whatever. And one of the things that we hear is not so much the speed, it's cost. They can't afford to have it at all. That's the bigger issue. It's the fact that they, you know, the, the, the household has a cell phone which has 4G, and that's their internet because they can't afford even the slowest service that the guys provide. That's been the feedback I got. So I don't know if you guys offer this or not. Um, we have a similar program. We're not mandated by the government to have this, but we do have a similar program. But I know that, um, that uh, Optimum and um, Comcast both have a Internet Essentials program. For anyone who's eligible for free and reduced lunch, they can get internet for $10 a month. It's like 10 megs or something. It's not a lot. But it's, it's for people with kids at home who need the internet and who can't afford an expensive connection. Uh, do you guys offer something like that? Or? No, we, we don't offer anything of that sort this time. Yeah, we have a similar type of program that we offer. It's kind of, we don't advertise it, but if someone qualifies and they say something to us, we will offer it to them, so. Okay, uh, my question is uh, going to start off with uh, being directed to uh, Service Electric. You're invited to town as a franchise, correct? And we operate under a franchise. You operate under a franchise now. issued technically by the state. Okay, now, you over the years, you came into the town and every year, or every couple of years, your franchise was renegotiated and you had to provide more and more services in the county, or in the town that you were franchised in. Now, what about towns that are have black holes? Do you have any responsibility? try to fill in those black holes as the franchises, as your franchise is renewed? Well, that's a negotiated process in each individual town. And if the town doesn't negotiate a you to fill in a black hole, and you don't offer to fill in the black hole, is that correct? I'm not sure what you mean by a black hole. Okay, let's talk about the section of the road that goes from the Chatterbox to the Sussex Airport. That section of the road from the Chatterbox down to, I believe, this Armstrong Road, if that's the, the name I got a horse farm, is dark. There's 565, you're talking about. Right. 565? 565, yeah. whatever that, that road is from the Chatterbox going to the, to the DD Airport. That section of the road is dark. There's people living on that section of the road. They don't have access to cable. They don't have access to, to your, your high-speed internet. I know for a fact that the phone company, if you can get two mega service on that section of the road, do your happy dance because that's about all you're going to get. Now, um, I'm going to go back to this time last year. I spoke with Service Electric Cable TV about putting service into the horse farm that was on that corner. Yes, fine, no problem. We can do that for you. And the installation was scheduled for July last year. In order for that to be done, I was, I was going to facilitate that installation for our customer. I checked the cable company on Monday, the guys are supposed to be there on Tuesday. All of a sudden, somebody decides to look at a map in the office and says, oh, we can't do that. Why? Well, there's no cable on that section of road. The closest cable is at this intersection over here. But yet, nobody chose to know that when the appointment was made. So, you send out your engineer. Well, okay, how about if the customer puts the telephone poles in his, on his property? Well, you need permits from the state to put telephone poles on your own property. What about if you go under, underground? Well, that's going to be another can of worms and everything like that. Every time I offered a solution to the problem, I was shot down by Service Electric. However, the customer does have a pole on the driveway. He lives across the street. How about if we bring the cable internet down the pole and terminate it there? At which point we will install 
a solar powered, wireless, point to point back wall to go 500 feet to his house. You can't do that, that doesn't meet our plant specifications. Every time there was a, a solution to the problem, well, what are you, you, you're going to take the internet and you're going to go wirelessly? Do you have a license to broadcast? You don't need a license to do a back wall internet between point to point. You can buy that stuff all over the market and you can go a quarter of a mile with something like that. We have four or five mile ones. Oh yeah, yeah, but some of that's got to be licensed. Well, I'm licensed that we know what, what, a mile or two okay. at, at gigabit. So, yeah. so the, the option was every time there was a solution to the problem, Service Electric just poo pooed the idea. Why is that? Well, again, I, I don't know who you spoke to and what exactly was said. I mean, we can obviously investigate that, James and I, tomorrow with anybody that would have been involved in that process with you. We're happy to do that. But we need to know the specifics, obviously. But getting back to where you started with the franchise process. Yes. That's a three-year process that begins prior to the expiration of the franchise. And that's called an ascertainment phase. And in that ascertainment phase, it's, it's designed for the town and the operator to look at what's happened in the past under the existing franchise, what the needs of the town might be going forward, including build-outs or any other issues that you know, they may identify, and we negotiate that. That ends up in an ordinance that we need in their negotiated process. Okay, and the other question is when I asked Service Electric Cable TV for a map of where they serve in the county, you thought I was, you know, it was a matter of national security. I couldn't get any information. <laughs> I, mean, this, 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 I mean, and somebody said, you know, try the, the sunshine request. I shouldn't have to ask for a sunshine request. I should be able to go to the Service Electric Cable TV office and say, where is your cable in Frankfort Township? And you should say, this is where we've got it, this is where we don't got it. Okay? What, I mean, I just can't, I can't understand, you know, some, some of the stuff that goes on. Sure. Okay. And last, lastly, you can go to Morris County, you can go to Hunter County, you can go to Warren County, and you can get internet faster speeds for a lot less cost than what we're paying for in the county. It seems that because we're way out here in the boonies and there's very limited service, you're twisting the knife on what you're charging. So I can respond to that. We actually have a, I'm not from Service Electric, so I'm not speaking for them, but um, we have a, uh, I don't know, excuse me, excuse me, I just, I played my own here, just, um, sorry, um, we, um, we're very creative with what we can do, and we can't do it this year, but next year we're deploying uh, a new development going in near Sussex Airport, and we're planning to pass there, so we'll be able to give you fiber. So, just reach out to us, and we'll get you on the plan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Shea. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Vernon Township School District, uh, and so we are partnered with Service Electric, so thank you, Service Electric. Um, and Jim and students, thank you for hosting this event. This is great. Uh, I thought I'd come here to represent the Township of Vernon because no one else would make the drive, and then there's Joe, and he made the drive down here. He works here. Though. So, uh, so I have some questions for Vernon, but one, one quick point. I really, we have a great partnership with Service Electric. You guys have been great Pentel data. Um, we, at one point, when I first came aboard years ago, we were paying $100,000 a year for a 100 meg dedicated connection. And now uh, you help us save 80% uh, of the money to our taxpayers. So we pay $20,000 for a gig. Students do not tell my students that you have eight gig. They will come after me with pitchforks and torches. Uh, but our, our gig is, is sufficient for us right now. It's been a great relationship, so thanks for that. Uh, in the area, I'm also a, a Vernon resident. I live in Highland Lakes. Uh, and so on behalf of the, the Vernon residents, there, there's not a lot of choice up there. It would be wonderful to have competition. We're far away from the rest of the county. We're also 72 square miles, and, and like Joe pointed out, there's people that live far away in a house and, and a bear, and there's nothing else anywhere near them. Uh, so it's, it's complicated up there, and I understand that. But the more you guys can build out, the greater it will be. Uh, my, my question for you all, and if you can share, share some data back with us, um, one thing uh, is your survey, if you can share us those links, I have 2,500 followers on Facebook, the township has 3,000.
if you can give us those links on, on surveys and where you'll build out to, I, I'm certain our, our uh, I get comments all the time from our, our families saying, oh my gosh, no one, you know, there's no options out here. So if they had a chance to fill out a survey, and I can share that out. Sure, ours is planet.net, and then you just go to um, services, high speed fiber, click on that, and then it'll bring you to the survey. Okay. The service lectures, you guys have a survey like that as well? That we can. As James said earlier, anybody that calls into the office or gives us any indication of interest in an area, Robin Blessings, who's not here tonight, unfortunately, but she'll go through the process. She'll look at the area. She'll see what we have, what they're looking for in terms of service. And then we try and put together um, a proposal, again, depending upon if it's a standard installation, would be a non-standard installation, what are the issues? Sure. Um, and, and that's just the process that we go through literally day in and day out with customers that call um, and that are interested. We do survey, and a lot of times it's based on a franchise where, where a town may indicate to us that there's these pockets um, that are interested in, in service, whether it's internet, cable, phone, whatever, and we will do a survey at that time, and we literally will go door to door um, if necessary. So that is a process that we've done um, but it's usually in that franchise, and that's the purpose of the franchise process, is to determine those things, and then, you know, for the parties to sort of act on them. Great, I'll, I'll try to show that back up in our families. My, my only other concern, and we have a, a tech committee right now that, that's been meeting over the summer, to talk about um, one of the things that, that Jim had talked about, so uh, inequality, the digital divide for our students that have absolutely no internet at home. From, from everything that we've tried to survey, we think that we have about 2% of families uh, of students that we know about, there could be more in the community at large. There's we have 22,000 people that live in Vernon. Um, so we have 2% of our families that go to school that, that don't have internet at home. And so we're trying to, to find a way to help them because we also are a Google school district. So we give homework and it's all in the cloud. And so if they go home and don't have access to that, you know, we're, we're limiting their success. Um, so I, I know Plant Networks, you said that you have like a, a free and reduced program and Service Electric said at this time you don't. I guess my question would be, could you consider something like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, and that's something we've done. Anything we've done for one town through a franchise process, we do everything. We don't isolate to one particular town. So if there's, you know, whether it's a senior citizen's discount that's been asked for over the years, or it's something along the lines that you're speaking of, if we were going to do something like that, we would do it everywhere. We would just do it in one place. Uh, but do you have something like that now, or are you planning something like that? We don't have a program like that, as described earlier, but certainly it's something, if people came to us and it was of interest, we would certainly do that. Because I get that question for families all the time, so... Uh, I don't know if you want me to reach out to you personally, or Jerry Foley, my rep, and Feel free to do that. poke at you guys, but I, I know our families, you know, they're, they're desperate for it up there, so. That's why we're here tonight, to learn about what these issues are. Right. Just out of curiosity, is that 2% based on Like from my understanding, I think it's neat. I, th I think it's low-income families. They, you know, it's it's a choice between putting food on the table or buying internet, and they're buying food for their kids, which is the right decision. But you know, it's you know, we're trying to you know, we've talked about can the school district buy mobile hotspots? Do we put Wi-Fi on busing? Do we open a computer lab after hours? Um, but you know, some way or another, we're trying we're trying to help these families so they can get what they get what they need, and have access to the internet. So um, just a quick, I know we're running most of the time, but um, my wife's a teacher, so she runs into the same issues that you have, and um, we actually started a nonprofit. We repurpose old computers, um, so we turn old PCs that are garbage to most people into Chromebooks and other, you know, make them useful, and we give them to people who, uh, who need them, so, and if you have if you have a company and get rid of old computers, especially laptops, um, go to givetechnology.org and um, see if you can donate, and if you have students who need computers, um, or need, need computers or anything, those, those same families, I don't want to think of it at home, but um, if, if some of them do and they still don't have that need, um, fill out the form on our website and uh, we'll be happy to get them a computer. I appreciate that. Thanks for your time, guys. Good evening. I actually moved here not so long ago, and I actually went into who has, which one of you provides to my area, and I was told I didn't have very um, much options by my neighbor, but I noticed that I in Green Township, there's these electrical panels, and it 
because the fiber optic cable and so forth, nobody seems to be able to tell me who owns them. Can we get, you know, cable or what else is under there? Because my area in Green Township is an internet. These are service electric. That's service electric. That's, uh, those are fiber optic cables that bring service to the area. Okay, so, um, so I should be contacting you for service? Uh, yes, we have, well, most likely, as long as your home is on plan, yes, you, will be fine. you can contact us or, or CenturyLink. Well, I, sent, I, did, for them, but I yes. did touch base with CenturyLink, and they actually hung the phone on me, saying that they don't provide service to that area. So, um... Where in Green are you? I am on Fox Holloway. Okay. So, I would love better internet service in my area, and I know my neighbor has told me who to go and contact and so forth. I even bought Orby to boost the internet service and I still can't stream very well. So I would like to know who can I talk to to get better service. Who do you have service through right now? HughesNet. Oh yeah, that, you're never going to be able to stream with that. Uh, no. 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 I first had Verizon and I did have a problem with them as well. And they actually were very courteous and professional and said, no, okay, we'll cancel your contract and so forth. I went with Usenet, and so... Call Service Electric, you'll get much better service. Wonderful. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Newberry. I'm here with my uh, oldest daughter, Melissa. Um, I'm coming here uh, just... The one thing I wanted to bring up, I wanted to bring awareness uh, to the people of Sussex County. Um, you know, there's, there's been a little bit of discussion of late, not so much at the beginning, that uh, internet is a critical component. It's not a luxury like it was in the 90s. It's uh, something that people need uh, to find jobs, pay bills, do more work, uh, work remotely, as is in my case. Um, and one thing I wanted to talk about real quick uh, was uh, the existence of community networks in municipalities uh, around the country, such as uh, some popular ones are Longmont, Colorado, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, these, are, these are municipalities, government organizations uh, who are looking out for the people, the citizens. They put together these networks so that the people living in that area uh, can really provide this internet for themselves. And my specific question uh, for general counsel for Service Electric probably, um, would in the future, uh, would Service Electric ever oppose legislation such as uh, Pennsylvania's legislation impeding uh, municipal networks from being built, uh, would, it, would you or any other ISPs ever uh, uh, oppose any of that legislation that impedes community networks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of our franchises have always been non-exclusive and will continue to be, and we have absolutely no problem with that. Great. So Thanks. You have that stuff. An answer, you know, no. <laughs> yes, sir. The biggest thing I wanted to do is uh, bring awareness to the people of Sussex County about that. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. I, I just want to uh, piggyback on what the gentleman uh, said. New Jersey has a, uh, has a law that does allow uh, municipalities and counties and other uh, local units to actually build their own networks and provide internet. So that's already in statute, it's already a law. So, uh, you know, so that would be up to the residents of the towns and the towns officials. Uh, to do that, but that, that is already in statute. It's been there uh, for over a decade. So I'll just be quick about it. Unfortunately, a lot of those networks, some of them are well run, some are not, and sometimes different people, you know, they, they become a, a giant boondoggle and use up lots of government funds and don't build. They build to politically connected people on the network and they don't build to most people, and then they run out of money and someone else buys the network, is what happens sometimes. Sometimes they're really well run, they're great, but yeah, you don't really know what you're going to get, so. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Chris Leone. Uh, I'm fairly new to the Sussex County area. My wife and I moved here about three years ago. Uh, quick background, I'm a systems engineer for a MSP in Morris County. I have clients ranging domestically from the Fire Department of New York, Franklin Road Police Department, the Raleigh Police Department, my international contacts and clients, all my clients are the uh, government of Turkey. As I said, I've been purchasing uh, cable uh, internet from Service Electric, and these guys are, who do you call it, the top level network engineers, PGP routing, things above my purview. I have a general understanding of networking, but I believe my wife and I purchased what they call 150 megs down. My 
house will be four years old in December, and I have speed tests the same way that we just ran here on the Wi-Fi. I don't think I have, I have, uh, I think I have over two gigabytes of just screenshots, which anybody knows about computers is it's a lot of screenshots. I've never received over 72 megs now. Never. My bill has gone up every year since I moved in, which is fine. I understand, like, from a business standpoint, I understand that updating infrastructure costs money. Fine. But there needs to be a little bit more of a concrete plan short term because my latency and my connectivity, I can't keep an RDP session open for more than, say, five or six minutes for my local network, for my remote computer working in the data center in Edison. I mean, that's a little, and I'm talking peak hours, I'm talking 3 a.m., 5 a.m. when I'm working around. So I would like to know a bit more of the short-term projects and maybe infrastructure replacement or upgrade. I understand this costs money. I don't mind paying three hundred dollars, but as long as I'm receiving what I'm paying for, if I'm supposed to receive one hundred fifty megs now, charge me one hundred fifty dollars a month. I don't care. But give me the bandwidth. Give me the speed that I need. I've had my home modem replaced six times in three years. It's never been home. It's not my modem. The last time I got off the phone with Service Electric's um, customer service, the lady told me, and I, granted, I probably wasn't as diplomatic on the phone, but I wasn't rude. <laughs> I'm not rude. I've never rude on the phone because everybody's a job to do. The lady told me, if I was worried about internet connectivity, I shouldn't have moved to Sussex County. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what time are you open? <laughs> I said, okay, well, you know, I work more than exactly. I said, I'd love to come down. I know you have to come to office, I'd love to come down and sit down with you guys and like talk about it because where I live, and I, live I said, I live in Byron. Everybody on my street has the same thing. You know, we go from house to house and look at it. The people that I know, and again, I've met people on my street, they don't care about what they're being charged. It's just deliver on the 150 down, or the 50 down, whatever, whatever people are paying for it. I mean, I'm getting less than half of what I'm supposed to be getting. But just, again, I understand peak time, I like that. I've got kids in the house, and they stream. I understand that. But that's not my job. My job ends at work, and I come home. And I pay you guys money every month. You know, it's delivered, you know. I, and I get it. I understand. But you got to come up closer. You know? Well, first, I apologize about your customer service problem there, where you were told that. So that, that's not acceptable. Yeah. Um, but there's no reason why you should only be getting 72 meg. On 150 meg connection because I have the same connection at home and I'm connected to the same equipment that you're connected to, and I get 150 meg. So, what I want to do is I would like to actually look at your account myself. I have right here. I can show you screenshots right now. I believe you. No, I can. 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 No, I it's time to upgrade the equipment. Charge! You want to raise your prices? I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, it's just as long as I'm getting what I'm paying for. No, no, I understand what you're saying, but there's no reason why you should be getting... No, sorry. Um, no, you should be getting 150 meg. Um, we have our network provision where you should go to get it, no matter where you are. We just recently went through a massive round of upgrades where we spent, I don't know how much money in, in, in investing a lot. A lot. And we, we've actually, we don't, we're using, you know, like today's technology out there. It's called Doxus 3.1, and it's a new kind of technology. So what I want you to do is, I would like to look at your account myself and then look at your modem, and then we can escalate that and see like how we can fix your issue. Because I, I, I think that it's unacceptable that, that you're seeing that. And I'm the final point about technical escalation at the company, so. I, I understand. I've probably spoken to a time or two on the phone. No, yeah. Never, no, I don't know your name. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, Do you understand? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. And again, I haven't been in town very long, but it's 
seems to me a lot of things I've read, and I don't want to judge anything that I can do here, so I don't want to go to the bus. But it just seems that there are quite a few people who seem to have similar issues that, you know, and it's good that we have these things to be able to sit down and talk about because I believe I'd rather stay with us, but I think those guys are used. I didn't know that. 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 I I just wanted to mention something about that on that. Just um, a lot of times people will get service from in high speed service, whether it's service electric 150 megs or our service of 300 or 500 or gigabit or whatever. A lot of times people have slower computers or they don't have good Wi Fi in their homes. So if you plug into the router and you test it there, then you test it uh, over your network. Like we, the other day, we have a client um, who has fiber from us who's paying for 500 by 500 and they were getting like. You know, I don't want to be like 80 or 90 or something. I saw one of our messages in support. And um, we went over and they were using a 2.4 gigahertz network, not their 5 gigahertz. When they switched to 5, someone went over to the house, and we, we switched them to 5, and then they immediately got the speed they were paying for. So a lot of times it's not necessarily the ISP. Like, listen, you know, we're, we, we all take criticism, and we actually use Service Electric for some of our business telephone customers to provide service. And they do offer 150 meg service, and you can actually get 150 megs if the equipment on the other side, and you may have some other issue, but take that up with them. But I'm just saying there's sometimes stuff inside the house or the business that's the problem. Is this on? Yep. First, I'd like to thank the students of the robotics team for seeing the need for this long overdue conversation. So I think we should give them a round of Because I think we all need to do something when we leave here tonight. We all have to start either going to our town committee meetings, we have to start going to our freeholder meetings, we have to start contacting our representatives, Senator Orojo, Worths and Space, Congressman Gottheimer, Senators Booker and Menendez, they are doing absolutely nothing for us and Sussex County. If you live down the shore, you get your beach replenished, thanks to us. You get dunes built, thanks to us. What does Sussex County get? I feel as though I am living in the hinterlands and that we don't deserve the same thing that other neighbors in Morris County, Warren County, all over New Jersey, yes. And we are paying top dollar for one-tenth of the service that we deserve. So if we are to do anything, I think it's our elected officials that we have sent to represent us, and they have not done their job. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Snyder. I have a software development company on uh, Plains Road near the fairgrounds. We're the ones with the driveway that everybody cuts through when you're going to the fair and you say, what the heck are they doing in that place? <laughs> We've been there for about 20 years. And I actually have a question for you and then I have a suggestion. Um, my question is, do, has, has the hanging the fiber been part of the problem throughout the county in terms of the access, the higher speed access in the more remote areas? Is it the actual physical fiber, the lack of fiber? So, so yeah, so we actually, so Service Electric has been here for a very long time. I mean, when did you guys start your franchise in the 60s? So they started, you know, there were, the Pennsylvania operation was the first cable TV company in there country, so um, these guys have been doing this for a long time. And so they already have poll, basically every single poll that we want to go on. On your way home, when you leave here, maybe at night it's not such a good idea. Tomorrow morning on your way to work, 
look on the side of the road as you drive by and look from your house at all the poles that you have to go to to get to the main, next main road. Every single one of those poles that we want to be on, we have to go out and take a picture of it. We have to do an engineering drawing, like not, not just like a, you know, just a picture. We have to do an engineering drawing. We have to measure with a laser every single attachment on it. Figure out who owns every single attachment on it. Every single piece of anything that's attached to the pole. Submit that in a drawing with a several page application to the phone company for every single pole. So every pole that we're on costs, depending on who we have to do it, if we do it internally or someone else does it, from hundreds to a thousand dollars just to get the engineering part of it done and do all the paperwork and everything. And then sometimes the phone company will come back and say, oh, we have to replace that pole. It's $10,000. Oh, we have to replace that other one. That's $10,000 too. So before we've done anything, our bucket truck hasn't gone out. We haven't had any fiber. We haven't touched the pole. It may cost us for, you know, go down your street and figure every one of those poles is going to cost $500 or $1,000 before we do anything. So if we were able to get on the poles very easily, we can hang fiber for less than $500 a pole to get to your neighborhood. So more of our cost is in engineering approvals than it is actually deploying fiber. And I don't know what they're getting it's, the same case. It's not the actual materials that cost, you know, that cost the most. It is, like Robert said, is actually getting going through the process of talking to the phone companies and talking to the power companies to get access to those poles. Otherwise, it would be much cheaper to, um, you know, offer service everywhere. And, and these guys, it's a little bit easier for them because they've been doing that since the 60s. So they're already on a lot of poles and they can just hang fiber on their existing attachments. But again, if somebody is in a neighborhood that's not served, and they have to go down the road and they have to pass 12 poles, you're talking about you know, somewhere around $12,000 or whatever just for them for an engineering costs and approvals. And also the time. And it takes, there's also a long, long time. It takes like three to six months that it can take to get on a new pole. But like if, if a pole needs to be replaced, it can take three to six months at a minimum. Yeah, and so that's before they've done any work. That's just to get the approval. So in, in some areas, we can call up and say, hey, we need to be on these eight poles and we get approval the next day, we can have fiber installed in less than a week. Okay, so if there is pre-existing fiber, can you continue from there? So there are multiple companies that have fiber on different poles. So Service Electric has fiber, AT&T has fiber, CenturyLink has fiber. Um, Service Electric, these are nice guys, but they don't want to enable their competition to deploy a neighborhood that they're already in or that they're near. So we have to get our own attachment point. So if you look at the poles, you'll see there's lots of different rows of, of fiber, different heights, and or copper in some cases. And there's pretty much copper in every pole. And then above that is the electric. So you have to be high enough so the tractor trailer isn't going to take your stuff down. And then you, depending on how high the pole is, you have to be, there's a safety zone depending on the voltage of the electrical power at the top that you, can, you have to be below. So if there isn't enough room above or below, then they have to replace the pole. But we have to get our own attachment. And in a lot of areas, like in Verizon, we can attach every six inches. CenturyLink wants it to be every foot. Why? I don't know why. Maybe keep people off the poles. So. so if I have CenturyLink fiber coming into my building, which is in the center of the county. We can't use that. Can't we have to run our own. Yeah, we can't either. We have to run our own. OK. So because I was someone, the gentleman on 565 who can't get access, I'm right over on the next road. So it seems pretty crazy. Yeah, so which road are you on? Plains Road. We have? We have a lot of fiber. Yeah, we have fiber. We, yeah. were, we were the first to get the fiber, and I'm right. 20 years old. And then, of course, FMI has fiber, and Select Insurance has fiber. And you're talking, you know, significant throughput there. And FMI and Selective both have fiber from other competitors, yeah. other Selects, yeah, and they both put it in independently. I was trying to work out a deal with both of them to put it in together and share it, and then we were going to provide service to that area in Branchville, mm -hmm. but um, they both opted to go a different way. Right. Uh, and then my suggestion would be that, um, as a couple people have mentioned, and as a business owner in the area, I I want to pay what I expect to pay for an, an enhanced service, okay? Um, and I'm sure that there are people out there that are willing to pay more money, whether they're independent contractors that work at home, whether they're, you know, they have children that are addicted to the internet and they have to game all the time, whatever the case may be. But is there a, have you done outreach to companies like mine or independent contractors like the people that have spoken 
to see if, if a group of us would be willing and offer some kind of incentive. So, for example, you know, because we're essentially helping you foot the bill. So, so we spend a certain amount of money up front and we get an incentive, say, for a three-year, you know, what is called a buyout, but some kind of program so that we get to maintain that cost that we're paying up front or we actually get some kind of discounted incentive, kind of like the tax incentives that people, you know, the companies get when they, they build in a certain area. Because I think businesses would do that. And, you know, I, I'm trying to That's I'm trying help business to make money, so I'm trying to help you guys figure out how to make money, but at the same time, who's going to put that bill? I think the, you know, the residents in the area are not going to do it, but the businesses would. I think the businesses would. I think the contractors would, because when we, when we have businesses up here and we work up here, we've made that conscious choice that we're going to have to drive further, we're going to have to pay a little bit more for gasoline, you know, that's, that's one, of, you know, one of the things that's part of living up here. So, I'm not expecting an answer, I'm just offering that as a suggestion. So, um, so uh, I'm Scott Hobb, I'm from Pentel Data, it's a service lecturer. They're one of our owner companies, we're a limited partnership. So, what you're talking about is exactly, you know, how we like to do business development. You know, Robert was talking about doing something similar there with FMI that you know, we want to go into people who are looking to get services. Um, when you can aggregate demand, you can share costs. And when you can share costs, everybody wins. We're happy because we got extra customers on the book. You're happy because you have more affordable infrastructure. Uh, so it's definitely a win-win. So we do outreach in cases like that where we'll get to a fringe area. And uh, really, it, it's, it happens on almost a weekly basis where We'll have somebody who wants service, and we look, and it's going to be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to get them service. I mean, um, and we'll see if we can partner them up with other people. But part of the thing in the business world is you know, you'll have you know some of these companies have corporate contracts, so your national companies have a national provider that they need to go through. So we may have fiber right to that facility, but they may not even be allowed to use us. Um, you know, and there's a variety of other things that can happen too. But no, that's the sort of thing that we, we have a lot of interest in doing that because it helps to grow the business. Because uh, James is the one that said it. You know, we're here to serve. If people don't have service, um, that's potential business that we're missing out on. You know, on the business side, but also you know, everybody should be able to access the internet. It's a very very important thing. So I think you know these discussions are great. Um, Brian and I came here from Pennsylvania. Uh, to come up to the meeting tonight because this means a lot to us. But I think, you know, there's three distinct things I'm hearing tonight. And one is unserved, where you can't get it. One is underserved, where you may think that you should have something better. And then there's also the price discussion. So they're all very important, but they all need to be tackled in different ways. So as we move forward, however you move forward, I would just make sure that you're clear on what, you know, each task, you know, as you try to go after it, uh, Robert talked about 5G. 5G is not going to fix rural broadband problems anytime in the near future. Um, we're having discussions like this, you know, over in the Poconos, and uh, you know, 5G is going to be a great technology, but it's not going to fix unserved areas anytime soon. Um, so I know that was a long answer, but I didn't talk much. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, aggregation is it's it's key. We do it a lot on the educational space. Schools have got together to do aggregation projects. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think my opinion being a business owner um, in the area and also involved with marketing and trying to get the word out about things, my personal opinion is that the first one out there, you guys, that actually makes a concerted effort to reach people like me and reach people like the, the uh, contractors out here that absolutely have to have internet connectivity. The first one out there is going to win because if you're positioning yourself, then you're the go-to person. Yeah, and that's exactly how we build our network. We build to businesses, and then we hit every residence we pass on the way. So, what you mentioned that there's parts of the Poconos that are in a similar situation in Sussex and Warren. How big of a stretch in Pennsylvania? Like how many parts of how many counties, or uh, would you say? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't give specifics, not because it's secret, but because I don't know off the top of my head, but, you know, in Monroe County, there's been a drive for faster broadband speed, which we often get it there. It's, you know, no problem. It's services reliable, it's pretty good competition. Uh, but it's more about the unserved areas, because being very mountain, it's very rural, like a lot of the area around here. Those are real challenges, uh, because we want to serve everybody, but if you have to go and build a half a mile, a mile, Make this up. You make a $30 a month profit on it. If you spend 
$15,000 to do that, the economics are really, really tough to swallow. Right. Some of the issues, um, I, I guess because um, Sussex being in New Jersey and New Jersey being so urbanized, we, uh, on, the, on the national level, um, kind of get overlooked because the USDA and the federal government has taken a great interest in rural uh, broadband. Um, across the country, um, the FCC is reporting 21 million Americans lack uh, broadband access, and 162 million people are not using the internet at uh, broadband speeds. And reason being, I, I bring this up, um, a multi-state effort. Uh, you know, recently, Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois um, just became part of something called the Microsoft Airband Initiative. But that initiative is looking to reach 17 million people in parts of those three states. So the, the part of the difficulty we're all having is, is not only being overlooked by, by government agencies, and, and, and another thing, let me back up, is the mapping the FCC is, has been using across the country, mapping out areas that have low speeds, it has been inaccurate because of, of areas like ours, because we're in closer proximity to places that do have high speeds, that the, the mapping is not correct. But also, too, there's, there's bigger land masses uh, that are in the same boat that Sussex is in, but the, the federal government has been looking at resources, uh, you know, the, the recent farm bill and, and other things, and trying to, you know, connect the biggest amount, of, largest amount of people first, and unfortunately, um, you know, we're, um, it's, it's taking time to trickle that into here, and that's, uh, I'm just bringing that point out um, because, you know, it, there, there are things, you know, we've been meeting with Microsoft, we've been meeting with other companies um, and government agencies trying to figure out how can we do this, how can we do this in a, in a more timely fashion. I mean, obviously, you know, students in school, you know, are not going to be able to, you know, hey, in a few years we'll get better, you know, internet, repeat that grade again. Well, that, that doesn't work that way. Or for a business trying to expand, they want to do that now, not later. So, um, you know, taking this issue very seriously, um, you know, trying to explore as many avenues as we can, as policy makers, as my bosses, as policy makers can, because it's such a, you know, we're, we're in such a microcosm of, of, of a bigger picture across the country and in a place where we're not that far away from, you know, areas of the state that have, you know, multiple options. Uh, so, you know, our job is not to get overlooked and to try to uh, instill more competition in this region and hopefully get uh, better speeds and hopefully, uh, you know, add to the success of, uh, you know, the people that are living there now. So, I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. And so I've looked at those uh, programs, the USDA and Rural Broadband and a lot of those other programs. Unfortunately, Sussex County uh, is not eligible for any of that funding. So if we could get low interest loans that would allow us to deploy, we'd be deploying at 10 times the speed we are right now. Unfortunately, we need to deploy, make profit, put that profit back into deploying, and we do that over and over again. But it's a lot slower than here's $20 million to deploy a broadband network. So. so I did, yeah, I looked, and, and there, the, the areas in New Jersey, all of New Jersey could get the, the FCC's data is badly skewed, it's terrible. In fact, the Senate, I think yesterday or today, passed a thing saying that they're, they're requesting that the FCC could get better data. So hopefully some of that will change, but um, it was the, the um, Senate Commerce Committee uh, passed that, I think, yesterday or today. But anyway, um, if we if we had access to some of those funds, and it's not it's not government you know handouts. It's a loan that has to be repaid. But we can't go to the bank and say, hey, we want to build a broadband network. I mean, in fact, when we started, I said, hey, I want to borrow money to start this internet connection company. And the person at the bank said, oh, the internet that's just a fad. You're going to be out of business in six months. And that was 25 years ago. So, um, but no, they're not exactly uh, you know eager to to help 
companies like ours grow. So, so changing the criteria. Changing the criteria and having and showing what's actually that a lot of Sussex County doesn't have. The broadband is also 10 megabits. 10 megabits is not broadband today. 10 megabits is, is barely adequate. That's what the, the internet essentials, that's $9.95 a month, is for someone who doesn't have anything and just needs internet to be able to access their Google apps for school. Um, anything above that is, is considered that they have broadband and they're not eligible for any funding. How's it going? My name is Thomas Smith. I'm also on Plains Road. As far as Black Hole, with that man, it's 565 Lynn Smith Plains Road, because I'm from around there, in which we were quoted $30,000 for five houses for all of us to be split. Now, my question is, is we're going to get fiber optics maybe by 2025, 2030, if we're... 2020. Okay. From planet anyway. Throughout the entire county? Uh, on Plains Road. Okay. Fine. 2020. Now, who is going to be fronting the bill because of that entire section of three miles? We have maybe five houses that are within 500 feet of the road. So, are we all going to be fronting another three thousand dollars, like you said, to bring the lines in, or is there another wireless option? The thing that we found is in a lot of rural areas, especially people who have farms. We said, hey, get your tractor and make it trench for us, and then we'll throw a bucket on it. And then we get EPA uh, fines for disturbing wetlands, going through all different problems in which government officials say, no, 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 we know that's better for you, but ew, here's a ten thousand dollar fine. I didn't see any wetlands disturbed. Uh, um, also, with the maintenance of the lines, I'm coming from CenturyLink, in which they basically say, we'll get to you when we get to you, and it's three months out. How is your line maintenance going to be maintained? compared to what we already have between CenturyLink, uh, Planet Network, and Service Electric. What's the longest time that anyone's ever been on the service with our fiber? A couple hours? Maybe. A couple hours, maybe. Okay. And one other question, I'm sorry about it. Just, nope, never mind. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heather. I'm here representing the um, County Library System, which is a stakeholder that um, I'd like to introduce myself as. Um, we are a sixth branch system in this county, and we are um, the gap that bridges that digital divide. So for people who cannot get access to affordable internet or visible internet, um, and for the kids after school that have projects that they can't do at their homes, we are the place that that happens. So. The reason that I'm here is um, we actually can provide um, decent internet access in our buildings, but it could be better. Um, there are some services that um, are offered by our state library. Um, like there's an EPPL service that we aren't able to take advantage of, and we're one of the only counties that cannot. It's just because we don't have the provider and we also don't have the infrastructure. So I just wanted to kind of identify us as somebody who's also interested in this topic. And um, thank you very much for putting this together. Uh, Scott, you guys are the provider for the, the uh, library system in, in Sussex County, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, did you say EVPL? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the technology or is that the, is that the like system? It would be a circuiting so that we can connect all of our branches together on okay. our internet services sharing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, you know, Depending how it's all connected, I mean that, that may not be unreasonable to take a look at, at doing. So we can certainly talk to you about that. Then. All right. Thank you. So um, one of the things that we have always done is um, we've always hosted nonprofits' websites for free, and we've always done certain things. One of the things that we have also always done is uh, provided free internet for libraries. So uh, when we pass you, we'll give you a fiber connection and no charge. So. Thank you. We are, we are not nonprofit. Though. No, no, I understand that, but it's. For the, uh, I know we know that it's used by people who don't have access at home, so that's important. Okay. So buy some more books instead. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Andrew. Um, I work as an application developer up here in Sussex County. I've worked up here for about three years, but I've only lived up here for about two months. So I was doing a 40-minute commute back and forth uh, for about 
three years. And the reason it took me three years to move up here was one of the big reasons was I looked at the internet out here. I had to really talk myself into moving down here, and when I did, it wasn't that great. Um, I'd literally never heard of playing networks before today. Uh, but uh, I did want to say if you want to invest in the future, and you maybe said that about an hour ago or so, uh, that we didn't have, we weren't sure if there was the demand for uh, higher speed internet, we didn't know. If there was the app that needed the higher speed internet for the kids or whatever. Um, that demand's not gonna come out here if the internet's not out here. The people who need that connection aren't gonna come here if the connection's not here already. Like, I think I'm, what I'm, I'm actually, I know it's coming, but I, I, I'm more interested in what is that application going to be. See yeah. what I mean? So like, I, it's not, I'm not saying that there's not demand for well, it, because obviously there is. It's not about the application, it's about yeah. people. And like about the, the people who use or need high-speed internet, like they're not going to be here to need it because it's not here. Like they're, they're just not going to come. Like live streaming, 15 up, that is not enough. So yeah. I'm just going to say that. Like no one's talking so, about live streaming, but maybe more It's, it's more about for the people who want, like, eventually in a year or two, I'm gonna wanna buy a house. Right now I'm just renting. I don't know if I wanna buy one in Sussex County. I might just go to Morris County where I can get better service for almost half the price. If not, i work. But that's just my opinion. I, I understand your concerns. I, I do get it. And we are, we, we make tries to invest in our network to, you know, continue upgrading our services. So we are continually working on, you know, building up our network. And it's not just me, it's all the ISPs that are I'm not good at it. When you're looking to buy a house, let us know and we'll uh, tell you whether you need to give it or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Harvey Rosef. I'm a councilman in Byron, but I'm here speaking, speaking for myself. I uh, want to give a little bit of background. I am in the technology field. Uh, I was on the internet in the 80s. I went all around the world dialing up CompuServe, AOL in the late 80s. And I, I kind of enjoyed the presentation uh, Mr. Boyle presented. It's, it's history that I lived. But it's history. And we haven't seen any real improvement in our area. I would say 10 years. Anything of, of substance. Ten years is an eternity in this, in this technology field. And I, I just want to give a little perspective on why I think that's occurring. Uh, I think it is a business problem. But it isn't because Sussex is rural. I mean, if you come to Byron, almost all our homes are in three, four hundred home enclaves. It's, it's not hard to bring fiber to it. Now, yes, there's, there's some homes a mile off of the path, and those are issues. But your business plan doesn't respect residential. You're here to milk the residential with old technology. That's how technology fields work when you don't have competition, and we don't have competition. And tonight is, is vivid proof. CenturyLink is not here. So we have a duopoly throughout much of the county. We have one representative of that duopoly, uh, Service Electric. Service Electric has a problem. Service Electric has a problem. They don't want to deliver you economical high-speed internet. And the reason they don't want to deliver you economical high-speed internet is you're going to cut the cord. You're no longer going to want cable service. So they have to keep the price up instead of giving you good internet service. And it isn't now because it costs so much for fiber that it's such a headache. It's there's no competition for this industry. And that's what the politicians at the, at the state and federal levels have to start generating. It was promised, I mean, you, you mentioned CLEX. It was promised 20 years ago, 20 years ago. And what has happened in that 20 years? In that 20 years, you've seen Wall Street buy up all kinds of utilities. It was the early 90s 
when utilities were allowed to be overtaken and treated just like any other entity. They, they have a monopoly status, but Wall Street can come in, leverage them up, resell them, repackage them, provide you no services, don't replace the utility poles, don't improve the service, keep increasing the prices. And that's what you've seen for 25 years now. So, so what I would say is the world's changing pretty fast. Cutting the cord is, is, is happening. At whatever speeds, people are cutting the cord. And you have to step up your game. You have to start investing in your technologies. Otherwise, there's going to be a total realignment. Someone like Mr. Boyle is going to come in and eat your lunch. And you're, you're the monopoly. They're going to eat you up just like Microsoft ate up IBM. And you're going to be, you're going to be missing the bow. And during that interim, everything stays fractured up. And you don't get a consistent service. And the public doesn't get cost-effective cost delivered services. And, and there's going to be winners and losers. And you have to decide whether you're going to be a winner. And I think that means you have to invest in your technology. I do have one other observation, which is new to me. Uh, this is the sheet that was handed out. Uh, giving us uh, speeds and feeds and, and uh, cost comparisons. And, and Service Electric is here, and I, I like that. And, and I don't know much about how this was put together, but you have half the monopoly. You have the highest price service. Warwick, I mean, a claim here on the sheet of paper, if it's true, Warwick is, is on copper offering high-speed services for prices that are like $25 a month. And, and again, I, I didn't bet this sheet, or maybe it's wrong. But at $25 a month for, for a 50 megabit download, people will cut the cord. And here's a little company that, that claims there, that this sheet claims is offering that. And, and I think in the long term, for the viability of the neighborhood, uh, we do need better investment uh, by our monopolists. And this, this should be a goal. 50 and 5 download for $25. My name is Nancy Miller. I'm from Sussex Borough. We love Sussex County. We live here because we like to live here, right? I love Sussex County. I work in Jersey City. I travel four hours a day. I get to work at home one day a week, and my internet stinks, okay? My upload is six. And I need to keep my job. I want to be working from home. I want 80% I want of the people that are working out of county to be able to work at home. We need this service, and we need it to be affordable. Because that's why I haven't switched over to cable. It's, a, it's way too much money for what they're paying in Morris County for the same service. It's double the price. And that's a, that's a concern to homeowners and people like us. Businesses, as the lady said, they may be able to afford it, but homeowners can't. So we need you to step up to the plate and, and get legislators to you know work with you. We need to bring our people back home because Sussex County would have more businesses if we had that permit. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so the young man over here to the left that spoke earlier, he called me over and he wanted to know about Verizon, you know. So uh, when Congressman Gottheimer was here April 16th, <clears throat> April 16th in the afternoon when the school bell rang, I was on the phone and I started calling Verizon. And it took me three phone calls to get through to the corporate headquarters in New York City. I've got a woman on the phone, she tells me she was, I'm a forecast engineer. I gave her the circumstances, told her a little bit about the background. She says, I'm sorry to tell you, we're not coming out in your area. 
All right, that I can tell you. That's that was a little bit of investigation that I found out uh, mid-April. Hi there, my name is Jim Baldini. I, uh, I live in San Diego. I'm also a school teacher at the Sussex County Charter School, and I understand and appreciate a lot of the pain that we're talking about with our students here. I'm also running for Congress, but that's not why I'm here. Up in Sandyston, I have 400 men. In Sandyston, which is very rural, it's part of the um, optimum is, uh, is our service. And I can tell you, Harvey's nailing it to what he said. Because to be blunt, our, I, I, I had Verizon, I had, you know, I had CenturyLink, I should say, and Worthless. I had, um, I didn't have service selection because you guys didn't work out there, but I did have that, I got rid of it as soon as that four and I also had Hughes in that too, that was, that was terrible. But I, I did have uh, Verizon or CenturyLink, it was terrible, and now I have 400 meg, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious, and we do need that competition in our county, and that's going to drive it. So thank you. That's what we're trying to do. I did have one more question. Um, the five hundred dollars that you mentioned per bowl, who, where does that go to? Like, where did uh, that, that's thrown in the garbage? It's burned up in a giant pile of cash on the ground. But, but who, do you, who do you write the check to? Engineering firms are people's no, time. I guess my question is, who's requiring you to do that? All the, so it's not, we don't write a check to somebody for $500 to get them all. It's, it's engineering costs, and it's just, that's the permitting process. If, if they had a database and we said, we want to be on that poll, they, they already know all this information. Right. It's just extra work that they make us go through to make it more expensive for us to get on the poll. So that regulation needs to go, is that what you're saying? They need to be required. Really what you should have is structural separation where the polls belong to one company that their goal is to get as many people on those polls as possible, as quickly and as easily as possible, and then everyone going to them comes into them at, at, as a, an equal number. So whether it's, it's CenturyLink or it's, it's these guys or it's us or it's some other company, that company that owns the polls wants to have more people on the polls. And then they say, okay, you know what, you can do three inch spacing, you can do six inch spacing, we're going to put you on the back of the poll, we're going to do whatever we can get more people on that poll. Would that require the same amount of engineering costs? Well, if they have the data and I could go on, the, I could go on to their website and say, I want to be on this poll, and this poll, and this poll, and this poll, we could be deploying fiber at 10 times the speed we are. In less than three minutes, you just solved the problem that we're at. Absolutely. It's a regulatory problem, and it's a and, and it's an anti-competitive behavior problem. And who's, who's regulations? That, that's not some so, state you know, that's, is that a local issue? Well, in, in New Jersey, um, and it depends on the state, different states are different, but in New Jersey, the power space, uh, so not, the telephone company doesn't own all the poles, the power company doesn't own all the poles, there's something called a joint use agreement, so they both own some of the poles. So there's electric on some power, on electric on some telephone company poles, there's um, telephone wires on power company poles, and the, the biggest issue is that in the telecom space, which is basically not electricity, everything, us, the cable company, the telephone company, any other fiber providers, any other c whatever, we're all in the telecom space, and CenturyLink is the one who takes care of that telecom space for CenturyLink territory. In Verizon territory, it's Verizon, and they're both a nightmare to deal with. So, so just to make it, because you know, sometimes I get thick in the head, and I just want to make sure I understand this. CenturyLink is the people who are keeping you making you spend that five hundred dollars. So your competitor is making you spend that five hundred dollars for both you guys. Correct. I think I see a problem. Thank uh, you. They don't need to deploy. They just need to collect fees from us. That's correct. Okay, if there's anyone else that needs to get it off your chest, now's the time. We're, we're here, it's quarter after nine. Anybody else uh, need to ask any questions, voice any suggestions, any thoughts? Hello, um, I'm Christy Corbos, I'm from Green Township. And you guys wanted to like know a little bit about like some of the people who live around here who are having problems. Um, so I'm a tax attorney and I work for Intuit, which is a software company that's in Silicon Valley. Um, I am on video calls all day long, <laughs> so that's part of my problem. I wish I could pay Surface Electric more.
for more internet, but I can't. So I have a, so it's like 150 down and 15 up, which I keep talking about the 15 up. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just frustrating because I wouldn't have moved here if I knew this was the situation because I moved from Panther Valley. And over in Panther Valley, in Hackettstown, I had no issues whatsoever. So I would, who would have thought moving just, I don't know, five miles further to Green Township in a lovely neighborhood, like with the, the Green Township School right behind me, lots of huge houses that like, what? There's, I, it's, it's just crazy. So anyway, I just thought I'd tell you, you know, it's like, I'm sure like we were talking about independent contractors, but just all the people who do work in tech for companies who are in California and just wanting like a better solution and willing to pay for it. Like that's what's so frustrating. I'm like, just double it. I'll pay you three times more. But you can't because it's just the way it is. So that's all. I just wanted to say who I was. Macaulay Road is on our short list, so we'll make the right and come into your development. Eagles Nest. Oh, yeah, Eagles Nest. Nest. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, it's in our plans for the next 12 to 24 months. I, uh, I live in Edinburgh Borough, and uh, my wife and I run a business out of our home there. And uh, I would only just add, it seems like a lot of things I came here to talk about were dealt with. Um, just that the customer support, I've been with CenturyLink and with Service Cable Electric. The kind of dismissiveness the one person got on the phone that you apologized for uh, is not the exception to the rule with either company. It's been kind of a normal. When I run into an issue, and the problem with my house is that it's intermittent, so I might have fine service one minute, but then to, to call in when it's the issue, and then by the time I get through behind a pole and all these kind of things, and then going through these various pro pro procedures to come to the solution, it might have fixed itself already. You know? So it's just a frustrating thing, and then to get that kind of a response as far as just, you know, what, what, what could I expect to, to live in Sussex County? That kind of a response to the problem is, you know, can be a bit frustrating. I went through the process of planning. Didn't turn out to be in our area to be something we could we could do in the short term. But um, yeah, anxious for better service. When we were looking at wireless, um, when we talked a couple years ago, but the last year, whatever it was, but um, you are on a short list for fiber, and so we actually sent a resolution to Andover Borough. I don't know what they've done with that. I haven't heard back from them. So, yeah, follow up and ask them. Because as soon as we get that resolution, then we can do the poll permits and, you know, talking about early next year. So, yeah, thank you. Very good.